Recently, I had a conversation with somebody that kept asking me, where do I get my ideas from and how do I manage to do so many things and have so many ideas and be able to kind of like always come up with different ways of actually approaching an issue. So it's very difficult to actually distill where ideas come from. But in this video, I would like to talk to you guys about this book that I read many years ago that kind of helped me to see ideas in a different way. And hopefully that actually inspires you a little bit in your journey, especially if you're stuck with ideas and where to go next. Hopefully this book will help you in your journey a little bit more. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, welcome to another video. Thanks so much for joining me. If you're new here, my name is Harvey Newman and I have been in the games industry and an animator for many years. And I like to share my knowledge here with all of you. Now, this video is all about the ideation process of any project or ideas that you might have going forward. And I do know a lot of people that actually struggle with this. I do remember growing up a lot of my family, my cousins and all that stuff, they always ask me this question about like, how can you come up with so many ideas? And I never thought genuinely myself any different than anybody else till this day. I still think that if I make it, if I made it in life, then anybody can make it. And I don't think I'm any different from any other person. However, I think the difference between actually having ideas and executing them is a massive chasm that a lot of people don't actually go through. I think everybody can have good ideas, excellent ideas, but not everybody executes those ideas and actually goes forth with those ideas. And this is basically, I think, what separates the people like the animators out there, the artists out there that are very successful. I think they are very good at executing those ideas that they have before they go away. And the reason why I'm saying before they go away is because of this book that I read many years ago that it's called The Big Magic. And basically the title of the book is Creative Living Beyond Fear by Elizabeth Gilbert. She actually did a really good job at distilling not only all our ideas come from, but also the executing part of the thing. And the whole book, basically what I got the most from the book, and I'm gonna break it down a little further, is that if you don't execute on your ideas, ideas kind of come and go from one person to the other. And when they go from one person to the other, they kind of go away mainly because the person that actually had the idea initially didn't execute it. And she actually breaks it down further when she goes into um, saying about like, sometimes it feels like somebody out there had executed on the idea that you had many years ago and you thought it was a good idea and then you never did anything and then years later somebody comes across and just creates this thing and we all had this feeling of like oh man i actually thought of this i wish i had done it like this person or i wish i had did uh, had done something on, on that on that level right and i think we all been through that uh, thinking about certain things and be like, I wish I could do it. And sometimes it's because you cannot do it because you know it requires money or requires resources or team. But some other times it's mainly because you are just being lazy or you actually don't feel like doing it. And I think that's the majority of people out there. And this is basically what she mentions in the book. So she actually goes about like breaking down exactly how you can actually go over the hump of this ideation process and actually kind of like execute on those ideas to make sure that when they get to you, they don't leave and go to somebody else. So you feel always like you kind of like when you have that idea, you need to action it so you can go ahead and actually succeed and you know be successful and put the idea out there in the world. Because she basically of what she mentions, at least I'm paraphrasing, but what she mentions is that once the idea is out in the world, it kind of fulfilled its destiny and now it's on to the next idea, right? Which I thought it was very beautiful and it was one of those things that you either are in the right mind state to actually take that information in or not. But to me, at a specific part of that, of, of life that I read that book, it really rang true because all of a sudden I started feeling fear of like when I have a good idea and I don't action it, then what's gonna happen? Has somebody, somebody else is gonna have this idea and then action it and then what's gonna happen, right? And this is basically the reason lately that I actually have made my uh, animation course um, for motion capture. Um, definitely check out the link below if you haven't so far. Uh, we basically about to actually kind of reach about 100 students now and we are actually having lots of, you know, success in a way that we 
actually are doing mocap, or people are understanding it really well, people are sharing their work on LinkedIn via videos and stuff. And I cannot wait to show you more because we have a few like super AAA uh, animators working on some shots with Nubian. So I'm, going, I'm looking forward to sharing those with you. So if you're interested, definitely sign in before, below. But like I'm saying that mainly to say that like the idea of that motion capture course came to me a while back, right? And I, I did the research because I had the idea. And I actually started kind of thinking, if I don't do this now, I think eventually somebody's going to do it. Because I know most of the animators that work in the games industry know about the stuff that I'm kind of teaching, right? And uh, only when you get to a certain level, you get to know the most advanced things like directing and planning and stuff. But I do know that most animators know how to do this. So eventually somebody will come and actually make an animation course that is gonna be absolutely badass about motion capture. And that is when that idea is going to go from my head to somebody else. And then I'm going to feel really bad about myself because somebody else had it, right? So it's it's kind of like sad when, you, when those things happen to you. So I feel like very much like I need to action it. And this is how I do most of my thinking nowadays. Proxima and Warship Jolly Roger and the work that we're doing right now in the game is the same thing, right? Like it's very much this idea that I had for this game and this studio for the most part. So actually kind of like gathering people together under one roof and actually making sure that they feel good making games, but also they can rally around a project that is like super well set up and also that they can have a lot of fun, express themselves fully because I believe that's the only way they can keep people together. So that idea was in, back, in the back of my mind. And I kept looking for studios all the time that hopefully would can give me that, but I never found them. And because I never found them, I kind of grew frustrated with like basically how people were running studios. So I decided just like, I just need to do this myself because I can see it so clearly that this will work based on my experiences from the past. I need to action it and hence why Proxima basically was born. And now that we actually have been doing this for a couple of years now, I can see those ideas in action and I can see that they are working. And even though we're still kind of like, you know, pursuing publishing and pursuing other things, the team itself is like super, super happy. So there's no better feeling of you executing on an idea and then seeing it basically um, blossom, right? Uh, it's almost like that needed to happen for this to blossom. And I'm not saying that we are the only studio out there that is trying to do this. I'm just saying that we're trying to do it in our own way. And that is very unique to you to your ideas, to your personality, to how your beliefs are and things like that, right? So going back to the book, basically what the book teaches you is basically a few points, right? And I'm gonna just basically mention three because that's basically what I took away from it and I added to my notes, right? The very first one is embracing creativity without fear, right? And basically um, what the book says is that by accepting fear as a companion, you can focus on the joy and curiosity that drives creativity. Um, and that is beautiful to me at the very least because creativity can be scary, especially at the beginning of your journey because you don't really believe in yourself very much. I think we all go through this. We always think, is this idea good or bad? And you check with your friends, you check with your close family, and everybody's telling you, yes, he's amazing, go ahead. But there's still an amount of fear within you that is basically stopping you from executing on that idea. Even the idea of success, to me, it was really uh, daunting, right? Because what if this succeeds? What can I do and where would I be? And what's gonna happen with me in the future? I feel fear to this day of like, if this company is very successful and it starts changing, Proxima, um, it starts changing and the money comes in and the money starts changing the company, what's, what does that say about me as a person? And that fear can become paralyzing and can very much be like that, that, that thing that stops you. So that creativity and that journey, to me at least, is more important now than actually f being fearful of what might happen in the future, which used to happen a lot in the beginning and used to stop a lot of the ideas because I would think about the success and the failures and what does that mean and all that stuff. So now I just focus on the present as much as possible and be like, it's about the journey, it's not about the destination. And if we actually get there and we get lots of money and then, I don't know, the company needs to change for some reason because of the money, because of investment, because of so many things going on, 
We will tackle that then, right? But until then, we can be creative. Until then, we can go into this journey together. Until then, we can have fun. And then we'll see what happens in the future. So that actually helps me a lot, which is amazing. The second point is you don't need permission to create. And in this, in this point, she mentions that you don't need anyone's approval for or permission to live a creative life. Whether you're an amateur or a professional, your creative work has value simply because you create it. And uh, this is what I go on in, about my videos a lot of the times here, where I mention that like, it really doesn't matter where you are in your career. It really doesn't matter uh, like if you are actually a professional or somebody that is just getting started. Um, your work has value because you decide it has value to you, right? So you are the one appreciating, you are the one feeling absolutely amazed by the things that you just created. But it might be really horrible for somebody with more experience than you. They might look at it and by, my, they might think, that's cute, that's it, <laughs> nothing else. And that's basically what the book kind of instills in you, right? If you are happy with it, like stop bothering or stop worrying about what other people think and also stop worrying about it doesn't look as good as this person's or that person's because that basically means that you will you will stop yourself from actually growing right because you are constantly comparing and you are th feeling frustrated because it doesn't look as good as this or you haven't achieved as much or you're not in the place that you thought you were going to be all of those things kind of stop you from creating from being creative right and then the third and final one that I actually kind of like got from the book is that value the process of over the outcome. So I just mentioned that here in just a bit about the journey. And in the book, the author says, success and failure are unpredictable and subjective. So it's important to find fulfillment in the act of creating itself. This mindset allows you to be persistent and resilient in your creative journey, regardless of the external validation of the results. To me, it's incredible that as many people that told me about focusing on the now and the journey instead of the destination, and I didn't listen to them in the beginning because to me it sounded like fluff. Um, and now, years later, as an accomplished person, artist, uh, whatever you might call it, um, I can see it more clearly than ever. And there is definitely power in the experience that you gather over the years. And I'm pretty sure this author is kind of like coming from the same place of experience with ideation and creation. So like definitely no matter where you are, each person's journey is unique to you and each person learns things at different rates, which is another thing that happens here in animation specifically where one animator feels horrible because they still learning the, the basics of the animation and they're still not there, while the other animator that started at the same time as them, they are already being hired by a studio somewhere, a dream job somewhere. And that is not really fair because the person that actually got there doesn't really mean that they are actually more successful or more um, uh, talented than you. It just means that the 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 consequent the the life itself organized things in this way. But on the long run, it might actually mean that you're going to be more successful than the person that got the job straight away. I have many examples of my own friends and colleague colleagues in university and stuff that got jobs straight away in like Hollywood and also VFX houses and like Pixar and stuff. And to me, I used to feel absolutely devastated by this idea of like, they got the stuff and I didn't know, and I'm still here and oh my God, and what's gonna happen? And then I realized that over time, right now, 20 plus years later, like my career can be considered by many that is more successful than theirs for a bunch of different reasons, right? And this is what I mean about like, you know, trusting the process and enjoying the journey because your mind works very different from anyone else's mind and you have to trust in yourself that the process your process specifically in the way you go about things is different but that's basically the context of this of this video is that ideas can start from anywhere trust yourself trust your process and do not look at anybody else like myself and think wow harvey has a youtube channel and he has a course and he has all these things in a company and all these things working for him 
I wonder if one day I'm gonna have it. I don't think that's the right perspective or angle to do it, which is basically what I was talking with this person about. I think instead of thinking about that is that I have my own journey and I hope one day that I can have many things like other animators instead of actually thinking I need to have exactly the same things as this or other person, right? Uh, so this is what I'm here to tell you. And also, if you want to start your own YouTube channel, I highly recommend it because we need more animation YouTube channels here on YouTube. And that's all I had for you guys this week. So once again, don't forget, if you're actually interested in learning about motion capture, a course, all that stuff, check the link down below, sign up for the course. And until next week, stay well, stay safe.